Hey, so this is the third add-on in a video uh, about how to build a tic-tac-toe application using C Sharp and uh, Visual Studio and uh, WinForms. And uh, the request I got was actually to add um, a little bit of a feature where when the application is launched, the user can type in the player one's first name or player one's name and player two's name. And then instead of showing X win count, showing the person's name, or O win count showing the person's name. Um, so this kind of dives into a, a couple new areas that, that may be good for uh, beginners to get uh, their head wrapped around just a little bit anyways, and the idea of using multiple win forms inside the same application. So we're gonna, basically, this, this should be a pretty quick one, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll dive in right now and um, see if we can add that kind of capability. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my Solution Explorer I'm going to go ahead and pin it just so it stays up there for you guys to see. But uh, if you right click on the project, you'll find that there is an add and a new item. And what we want to add is basically a new win form because the idea here is that we want to show a form that allows the user to type the first name and the, of the player one and the first name of player two um, so that we can collect that information. I suppose we could try and find a way to do it here. Um, there's not much screen real estate to do that. Uh, you know, there's there's probably lots of ways you could do this. I'm gonna go just a really simple way here. So again, if you right click on the name of your project, oops, and you don't hit something, <laughs> oops, go back to Solution Explorer. Um, right click, go to Add. This is gonna not let me do it because that's working. Let's try this now. Add new item. And if you uh, come down the left here, yours might look a little bit different, but go to your Windows Forms, and we just want to add a very simple win, win form, another one. You can rename it, uh, you know, something if you want to. I'm just going to leave it Form 2 for now, and click Add. And what you'll get is basically an empty Windows form, um, just like we got when we started our original project. Now, um, the controls that we need here are basically a couple labels and a couple text boxes, right? Um, where we can say, uh, you know, Player 1, Player 2 and have a button to submit um, that information, right? So I'm going to change this to say player one. And I'll make it a little bit larger. Let me unpin this now. We'll say 12. That ought to be good. And then I'm just going to copy that guy over. Oops. And we'll name, rename this player two. Okay. And we need a couple of uh, text fields, right, for the user to type into. Text box. And we'll go ahead and make this uh, a little bit bigger as well. And again, you can make this sort of look however, however you want to. So we'll call this P1 for player 1. <clears throat> Excuse me. And P2. And the last thing we need is basically a button, right? So let's put a button on here that says uh, play. Right? So the idea here is that we're going to show this form. The user is going to type in player one's name, player two's name, and then uh, they'll be able to submit this information to the application, right? And I'm just trying to clean this up just a little bit. Okay, we can use the uh, auto-align features here. Oops. And we'll just make that tight. Uh, let's give it a little more room. And then we'll bring this up a little bit. Okay. So now if we run this, right, we've got two forms. However, uh, nothing really changes, right? Because we haven't actually instantiated this new form. We haven't told our application to show it to the user, anything like that. So let's tackle that next. <clears throat> now, if we think about when we want that to actually happen, we want it to happen, happen when the application is loading, right? Um, now, the default event for a win form is an onload event. If you come over here, uh, if you select your form, uh, and again, I'm on form one, 
um, you'll notice that there is a load event here. And basically this occurs whenever the form is loaded. You can also, so you could either type a name of a method here, or since it's the default kind of uh, handler for a win form, um, we can just double click this and Visual Studio will create it for us. Now what we want to say is we want to say when this form is loading, when this eye is loading, we want to fire an event that says I want to show this form first, right? So what we have to do is we have to create or instantiate a new uh, object using the um, form we just created. So let's do that here. Okay, so now we have form two. Now, <clears throat> there's a couple different ways to show a form or a dialog box. Um, and I, we'll look real quick at the difference between the two. So you'll see here there's show and there's show dialog, right? So let's look at show first. If I run this now, you'll notice that the onload event gets fired, right? And we said that we want to show this uh, other form two that we created, right? So uh, sh the show doesn't have any sort of parameters that require action from the user. Show dialog, on the other hand, does. So if we use show dialog instead, basically execution will, will halt here until the user closes the, the the form, the dialog box. And in our case, we're either going to have the user press play or click X or whatever. Um, probably press the play button, right? But if we run this, you'll notice that this is the only thing you get. And until we close this form, um, we won't see our actual tic-tac-toe application, right? So if I hit the X button, that will close it and we can actually continue where we left off, right? Um, okay, good. So we, we obviously know we want to sh roll with uh, show dialog. Um, <clears throat> let's tweak a couple things about this form that I just kind of noticed. So I'm going to change the name of the form to tic-tac-toe so it matches our other application. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the, uh, the icon again, right? Uh, we don't need to maximize this ever, so we can set the maximize to false, right, the maximize box. And then I don't want the user to be able to resize our application, so I'm going to basically come in here and say minimum size and maximum size is what we have set now. So they won't be able to, uh, to change that. Start position, I'm going to also say center of the screen, okay. So now when we run this, we should see those minor tweaks, right. Starting in the center screen. Now we can do stuff here, right? Nothing happens, right? We can hit play, right? We haven't told it to do anything yet. So let's do that. Uh, actually, before we do that, let's 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 add a couple things that we're we know we're going to need on this side, right? So the way that our application currently works, if we come up here and look, when there's a winner, we basically say that X is the winner, O is the winner, um, and then we we show that in our message box. And then we also have these labels here, label one and label three, that say X win count and O win count. Now, if we know the user's name, we don't necessarily want to say X win count. We'd like to say Chris, or we'd like to say Ryan, or whoever, whatever names the user input, right? So let's create a couple of variables that have to be static variables um, that will allow us to store. Um, the names that the user types in. Now we want to use a static variable here because we want to to make it easy on ourselves um, for this form to, which is instantiated, it's going to collect the data for us to pass the the input from this form to this form where we actually need to use it and we need to show it right, and where we have our game logic that's controlling it. So let's go back to here. Let's just create two static strings. One called oops. One called player one and one called player two. Okay. Um, let's see here. We also probably need to provide this other form a mechanism to update those variables, right? To actually provide these values and store them into these these two variables, right? Now we could do that very easily by creating a new method. Obviously this method has to be public. And public's a modifier that says whether or not this particular um, method, or in some cases variables, in our case right here, method, is available or accessible from outside of this class. Um, so we want to have a public static method that's not going to have any sort of return value. Um, and we'll call it set player names. 
and we're going to accept two arguments, name one and name two. And the very simple function of this uh, of this piece of code is to update our players, right? Now we could have made these variables um, public um, and and sort of done it that way, but it's it's less it's not as clean um, of an approach. So this is actually a better approach. And now what we can do um, is we can go back to our form that we created. Um, and what we want to have happen is when the user clicks play, we want basically to call this method that we just created and update these variables, right? So let's do that now. Let's do this. When the user hits play, we want to we want to call form one dot set player names, right? This is the method that we just created, and we want to pass it. Um, if you recall, we called this field p1 and this field p2. So we want to pass it p1 dot text and p, oops, we don't need the and, p2.text, right? And then the next thing we want to do is we want to close uh, this form too, right? So basically, we run our application. This pops up. Um, the user is going to type a name here and a name here and click play. When they click play, our method that we just created over here to set the player names is going to get called. We're going to update these two variables that we have here, and then we're basically going to close this form. Okay? Um, let's just let's just run it and let's just see what we get. Now we shouldn't see anything too drastic, right? Because we haven't done anything with the names yet. But let's make sure that when we type our names and we hit play, that it does actually close the application, or I'm sorry, that that earlier win form, and then we get our application, right? So what's the next thing that we want to do? The next thing we want to do is probably update these labels, right? And then we want to make sure that when somebody actually wins, we don't say X wins, we say the player name wins, right? So let's close him out. And because we set up those two variables, these are very simple things to do now, right? So let's go in here where we have winner equals O. We can say winner equals player two. And because we, we already have kind of the logic built in that the player one is always X. Player one, okay. Um, now what we can also do, if you think about it, when this form gets loaded, this is probably a good time for us to set these label values, right? X win or O win, instead of having that, having the user's name. So we already have our form one on load or load event. Um, so let's do this. Let's say, and if you recall, I think we just went with generic here. I think this is label one is the name of this, this uh, label. And label three is the name of this one. So let's say label one dot text equals player one. And label two dot text equals player two. Now the great thing about show dialog is this isn't gonna this is basically gonna halt execution right here. So these won't ever this these two pieces of code won't actually get executed until that dialog gets closed. Now we know that when that dialog gets closed, um, that we've already set P1 and or player one and player two names, right? So we're not going to get ahead of ourselves there. So that actually works out pretty well. Um, so this is simple enough, right? So let's we've made those two changes. Let's see what we get now when we run our application. So if I type Chris, oops, and my wife's name is Ryan, and I hit play, you notice now we have Chris. Now oh, I did label two, right? This is label three. So I need to fix that. Uh, we'll do that in a second. And then, but let's also check and make sure that if we do this, now we get Chris wins instead of O wins. Or if we do, now we get Ryan wins, right? That's what we're looking for. Um, so let's go back in here. This is obviously wrong. This needs to be label three. Um, if you notice too, one thing, one thing I didn't like <clears throat> is this is now kind of off center, right? And, and that's because the, the labels are basically resizing themselves to the content that's in the label, the, the text, the length. Um, we can solve that really easy by kind of hard coding the, um, the size of these text fields right here. So let's go back to the properties. Um, this is the current size right now that we have. And I think, oh, let's do this one. Let's go in here and just set max size and min size. And so they're hard coded. And that will solve that problem for us. Okay. And one thing we also probably want to do is set the alignment 
right now it's top left. We probably want it centered, right? So instead of left, we'll go center. Now when we run it, Chris, Ryan, you'll notice that it's a little bit, it looks a little nicer, right? Everything's a little centered. Um, there's one other thing we'll do real quick, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, and that's, I don't know if you, if you heard that ding, you probably didn't hear that ding. I'd love, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, an, I'm a keyboard guy, right? If I can avoid using the mouse, I will. So if I'm pressing enter right now, I get, I get nothing, right? So let's create an event handler that will actually, when you press enter on this text field, will actually submit the play button or we'll press the play button for us so we don't have to use the mouse. And that's simple enough too, right? So let's go in here. Um, We'll select, because uh, 9 out of 10 times, right, the user is going to type this first, and then it's, it's going to type this, and then have to click play. So let's add an event handler here on button press or key press for that text field, right? So P2 is this text field. We're actually essentially adding a, an event handler that says when a key is pressed, um, I want to do something, right? So I'm going to say if um, E dot key char to string which will basically tell me um, what key on my keyboard was pressed if that equals a return right which uh, would be our escape character which is that backslash I guess that is um, and the letter R which stands for return um, we want to basically emulate a button click right so we can say button one perform click right so let's try and run this now one more time. So if I type Chris and Ryan and I press enter, you'll notice that took care of it for us, right? So really quickly, uh, you know, kind of summation, you know, adding and working with two different win forms. Um, this would be a way to allow your users to uh, provide their, their name um, so that uh, it's a little more personal, maybe a little less abstract. So give it a shot. Um, you know, this isn't obviously uh, the only way to do this. There's lots of different ways to do it, and probably there's uh, ways that you could clean it up a little bit. But this way would work. Um, so give it a shot, and it's not too complicated. Take care.